An NBC 15 exclusive investigation, terror in Alabama. Tonight, we're alerting you to a small group of terror suspects who lived right in our own backyard. Yeah, the FBI zeroed in on this splinter group last year, and NBC 15 News is now uncovering how and why these terror suspects were on the Fed's radar. Investigative reporter Andrea Ramey examines how a seemingly fringe group can prove to be so devastating. Probably every field office in the FBI, no matter how small, has an ongoing terrorism investigation. Including here in Alabama, where the FBI says it found an active cell. Court records we uncovered show a terror suspect owning property just six miles from downtown Tuskegee. From above, it might look like an illegal dump. There's dozens of blue barrels, piles of wood pallets, and tires everywhere. But a federal search warrant indicates you're really looking at a compound where terror suspects built a, quote, military-style obstacle course. A compound very similar, investigators say, to another one they built in New Mexico. The one the FBI raided last year and found evidence this group was plotting attacks on American soil. It does happen, sometimes where you least expect it to happen. Tim Furman knows all too well the terror threats that exist. He was the special agent in charge of both the FBI Mobile and Salt Lake City field offices in our post 9-11 world. Just because you're in a small town or a small state does not mean you might not potentially have individuals uh, engaged in the types of activities that would call into question threats to uh, national security. The FBI says Siraj Wahaj and four others had a stash of guns and ammunition and were training children to carry out attacks against the government at their New Mexico compound. News reports also indicate Wahaj had traveled to Saudi Arabia. You don't have to look far to see the suffering and devastation fringe groups can inflict. Sri Lankan officials say an obscure Islamic group that had been vandalizing Buddhist structures escalated their acts and carried out the Easter Day suicide bombings. Authorities now say that splinter group was supported by ISIS. When they're aspirational like that, they search out and try and find the mechanism to act on their aspirations because they can't do it alone. Mass funerals were held for the more than 250 bombing victims, many of them children. A sober reminder the terror seemingly small splinter groups can inflict on society and why Furman says the FBI takes all threats seriously, even when many of us, he fears, may dismiss them. The farther away we get from 9-11, the further away we got from the Oklahoma City bombing case, some people get complacent and they're no, it does, no one needs to be complacent. Monday, the leader of ISIS appeared on video for the first time in five years and praised the terrorists who carried out the Easter bombings and urged supporters to keep up the fight. Andrea Ramey, NBC 15 News.